Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Singapore, I am delighted to welcome you to the third meeting of the Standing International Forum of Commercial Courts, which I shall refer to in short as the Forum. We were all looking forward very much to hosting you last year, before the COVID-19 pandemic took the world by storm. While we had hoped to welcome you physically this year, the ongoing pandemic situation has made this unadvisable, or if not impossible. We are nonetheless delighted that technology has enabled us to host the forum online this year. Your attendance and contributions at this online meeting speak of the incredible commitment that we share towards achieving the goals of this forum. As many among us will know, this forum was established in 2017 for three foundational reasons. First, users of commercial courts will be better served if courts work together to keep pace with rapid changes in the commercial world. International cooperation in this area is essential because commerce is increasingly international. Today, commercial courts around the world deal with similar issues and grapple with similar challenges. These include the rising cost of litigation, increasing complexity of disputes, concerns about delay in proceedings, and rapid developments in technology, just to name a few. This forum allows us to share our experiences and solutions, collectively refine our ideas, and develop international best practices. The second reason for this forum is that together, courts can make a stronger contribution to the rule of law than they can separately. With the internationalization of commerce, the rule of law has become critical, not just within our jurisdictions, but across jurisdictional boundaries. It cannot be overemphasized that the rule of law is critical to stability and prosperity worldwide. After all, stable legal environments are vital for commerce, for they provide the bedrock for investor confidence and the impetus for parties to deal fairly with each other. Third, the forum provides a means of supporting developing countries in offering effective means for resolving commercial disputes. This will, in turn, increase their attractiveness to investors. As already alluded to, a functioning and efficient commercial dispute resolution system is integral for attracting investment, which depends heavily on the protection of property rights and the enforcement of contractual obligations. At the first meeting of the Forum in 2017, the Right Honourable, the Lord Thomas, astutely highlighted the potentially huge and very significant contribution that this forum can make. He also underscored the importance of this forum being more than just a talking shop. I'm pleased to say that, four years on, this forum has indeed walked the talk. It has made some very substantial contributions to the three causes it has set out to promote. To give a flavour of some of these contributions, in the past year alone, we saw at least four significant developments. On 27th May, the Forum's first international working group published a set of working presumptions for best practices in case management. This is a useful resource upon which individual courts may develop approaches suitable for their unique context. Two days later, on 29th May, the Forum launched a memorandum on delivering justice during the COVID-19 pandemic and the future use of technology. This memorandum examined the ways in which fair and open justice can be maintained amidst the pandemic and how we can harness the power of technology to do so. The memorandum is accompanied by an impressive annex which details the methods employed by courts across the world to respond to the pandemic. In June, a meeting of the Forum's Judicial Observation Program was held virtually. Judges from eight different countries, spanning six different time zones, met to share experiences and engage in discussions. Topics covered included case management best practices, dealing with backlogs, and the handling of witnesses online. In December, 
the Forum published the second edition of its multilateral memorandum on enforcement of commercial judgments for money. The memorandum outlines the way in which judgments from one jurisdiction may be enforced in another and covers more than 30 jurisdictions across Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America and South America. It is all the more impressive that these developments took place during the pandemic and indeed in response to it. The pandemic has had such far-reaching effects that these days one can hardly make a speech without making some reference to it. COVID-19 has severely weakened the global financial market, disrupted supply chains, and caused widespread rising unemployment. Just last month, the International Monetary Fund released a report estimating the global growth contraction for 2020 at minus 3.5%. As the pandemic wrecks its way through the global economy, businesses around the world are already confronting the fallout from failed enterprises, contractual breaches, and other commercial disputes. At the same time, even as critical cash flow issues demand the prompt resolution of disputes, many have fewer resources than ever to expend on dispute resolution. Despite the dark clouds, the pandemic has, as with past crises, illuminated human ingenuity and engendered the spirit of cooperation. Courts around the world, including those represented in this forum, have responded promptly and purposefully to the pandemic. While the instinct is, of course, to find immediate solutions, we must also seize the opportunity to look further ahead for the pandemic has given us the impetus to rethink, reshape, and reimagine the face of commercial dispute resolution. I will touch on just two areas for consideration. First, the role of mediation. Mediation enhanced access to justice as a cost-efficient method of dispute resolution. By encouraging constructive dialogue between the parties, Mediation also has the ability to repair and reinforce relationships. Further, parties are able to fashion creative and mutually beneficial solutions which may not be available in litigation and arbitration. We in Singapore recently experienced these benefits firsthand. When COVID-19 disrupted the Supreme Court's hearing diaries, the court promptly collaborated with the Singapore Mediation Centre to roll out an initiative known as the SG United Mediation Initiative. The mediation services provided under this initiative helped many parties to resolve their disputes amicably and at a far lower cost. At the same time, it reserved judicial resources for cases where adjudication would be more appropriate. Thus facilitating the optimal deployment of such resources. At the international level, there is now greater impetus to utilize mediation for resolving commercial disputes. Previously, the lack of certainty in cross-border enforcement of mediated settlement agreements was one of the downsides of mediation. However, a game changer entered into force on 12 September 2020. I speak here of the United Nations Convention on International Settlement Agreements Resulting from Mediation, also known as the Singapore Convention on Mediation. The Convention provides a framework for the international enforcement of mediated settlement agreements, thus giving businesses greater certainty in cross-border enforcement. The Convention now has more than 50 signatories including two of the world's largest economies and three of Asia's largest economies. Against this backdrop, it is useful to consider how mediation can play a greater or more formalized role in the resolution of commercial disputes. The second and final facet I will touch on concerns the use of technology. Technology has been an excellent enabler in our pandemic response. The most noticeable change in this regard 
insofar as courts are concerned, is the rapid pivoting to remote online court hearings. This enabled courts to continue resolving disputes when the pandemic precluded physical court attendance. Of course, remote online hearings have introduced a separate set of issues. These include the possibility of witness coaching, difficulties in ensuring open justice, and the need to ensure that those who are less technologically inclined or equipped will still have access to justice. In the face of these issues, the work of the Forum has only become more important. It is vital that courts around the world come together to discuss and share ideas on how to best meet the challenges wrought by technology. The now ubiquitous use of video conferencing technology does not, however, mark the end point for using technology in court processes. Technology can certainly be further leveraged in the pursuit of justice, and in this regard, it is very timely that the Forum will be discussing issues relating to blockchain technology, artificial intelligence and big data, as well as their roles in the justice system. Putting our heads together is an excellent way to explore the untapped transformative potential of technology while keeping a keen eye on attendant practical and ethical considerations. Let me conclude my remarks by wishing everyone a most productive meeting and the very best of health. Thank you.